Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video, I'm going to be doing something quite unique. Well, unique to me. Um, but first of all, I want to try to uh, go through some of the materials I'm using. Uh, first off, I've got the one inch hake brush, which I am a fan of using if you've seen my channel before. And then I'm using uh, Ice Bear Squirrel Mop. It's size 2 0, 2 slash 0. And then I've got a Da Vinci Round brush, which is a smaller brush. Um, and this is my palette. It's a mix mostly of uh, Jackson's professional grade watercolours and I have actually topped up a few colours with M. Graham's. So I'm starting off with uh, plenty of water on my hake brush. I want to cover the whole of the paper so I get some nice soft diffusions and you can see the amount of water that I'm using. And one of the things, um, one of the keys to seeing how dry the paper is is just seeing that sheen on the on the surface so when that starts to go dull then it's almost uh, it's drying so i want to catch most of this while it's wet and i'm starting off with a nice rich nice quite rich mix of yellow ochre oh this is uh, cold pressed paper 140 pound size 15 by 22 um, so I'm just pulling the colour towards near enough the centre of the paper and I want a nice light area towards the centre so I've got this nice shaft of light and I'm just beginning to add various different colours to the sky so I'm touching a little bit of brown I do tap into some red and then I'll be using some of the French ultramarine with all the different colours that I've used so far. So I am having a, a big body of water in the bottom half of the painting so I'm just going to get some of that colour in the bottom as well, just a soft reflected light. Um, I'm just adding some of that French ultramarine and as it mixes it gives me a nice uh, grey as well. Notice how I'm using my hake brush as well. I'm using it on its side now and dragging it across. So that'll give me some nice distant clouds as well. If you do like my video so far then please do hit the like. It really does help the algorithm um, just send my video to more people so it does help a small channel like mine i do like to use the uh, card to scrape out some highlights some rocks so i'm popping in some mountains in this um, um sort of mid distance so that'd be a nice um backdrop with the uh, sky you can see all the interesting colors that are happening in the sky and because it's still soft i got this nice diffused look as well and the colors are nicely flowing together and giving that unique look and like i said um watercolor is all about timing i haven't timed this bit right i just want to add uh take out a bit of the pigment uh, from the middle so it gives me that reflective light in the water but i think i've timed it a little bit wrong so sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't uh, it just depends so it really is about timing so if you want to lift or scrape anything out you gotta choose uh choose the right time when the paint's almost dry but not quite it's beginning to dry a little bit here so i'm struggling to scrape out anymore i can scrape with a corner as you can see but it's a little bit dry now to scrape um getting a decent scraping effects um with that. One of the things that I always do and I do encourage, um, I do have plenty of breaks while I'm painting just to um, think about where I might go next, what I might include. Um, so 
I actually left this painting till the next morning. Um, so I got the first wash down and then just completely left it. So I've got fresh eyes and I can decide where I'm going to go and what to add. And one of the things I did decide, and I've never done it before, but I wanted to add some palm trees. So with the, um, I was going to say fan brush then. So with the hake brush, I want to get the basic shape of the palm trees. Now, like I said, I've never, never painted palm trees before, but thankfully because of YouTube, um, I did have a look at a couple of videos just briefly got the main idea and the shapes in my head and then just uh, go in and try my best so like I said the hate brush will give me the basic shapes and then I will go in with different brushes just to bring out some of those uh, finer details Look how nice the um, the background's soft diffuse colours, and then you got this really dark uh, tree, the foliage of the palm tree in the foreground, with a right really dark contrast. It really does um, it really does look nice um, to have these two soft colours and then a really dark sharp um, contrasting tone in front. It really does help. It's quite pleasing to the eye in your painting. I think we all have brushes in our selection that we never seem to use. This is one of mine. Uh, it's a Jackson Silverline dagger brush. And I just thought this would be quite nice for the um, the way the end of the brush, the tip. So I'm using this just to get those uh, lines coming out, um, spiny sort of leaves and foliage from the palm tree. But if you don't have a, line, a dagger brush, then you can also use a liner brush for this uh, part of the painting or just any small uh, brush. Now I am painting from uh, imagination with this uh, this one so it's something really that uh, is come quite it becomes quite easy after a while um, I, I say easy and I've said these sort of things before uh, for some people it, it isn't easy and I appreciate that I understand that but I think with time as the more you practice the more natural it becomes because honestly I a few years ago, if he was asked me to do a painting from the top of my head, and this really wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't be able to do anything like this. So it just through constant practice and uh, trial and error, uh, sometimes you got to experiment and sometimes you got to fail as well. So not every painting is going to turn out as a masterpiece by any chance. Um, so you just got to persevere, especially with watercolour. Um, I know some people really do struggle with the medium. Uh, it is uh, known, or it's people say it's the hardest medium to paint with. Um, I, I, I guess I agree. I know there's uh, with oil paints, they're a lot more forgiving. You can sort of do a painting and revisit it you can even leave it for a few days and go in the paint's still going to be wet you can adjust things you can cover things go over and so you have all that to play with but with watercolor like i said it's all about timing and i think for me i i like to go quite quick on the paper and so you get these nice looseness this nice fresh look to your painting so if you do struggle then maybe um, try and set yourself a time limit try and get as much down with as little brush strokes as possible use bigger brushes 
Uh, like I said, the Hake brush is a really nice, versatile brush. And for those big areas that you want to paint, then a Hake brush is perfect for that. Or you can use any sort of large brush. I do, I am a fan of the mop brushes, which are really, really nice. This that I'm using now is quite a small mop brush. You can get a, a lot bigger. But I find this one quite quite nice for smaller details and uh, they hold plenty of water as well. So if you don't have a hake brush, then I do recommend uh, just picking one up. Um, mine is actually from Jackson's, so it's the sort of, I think it's a Jackson brand. So it really isn't expensive. And then uh, I'd definitely look into investing into some mop brushes as well. So there's many different brushes that you can use, um, but these are ones that I really do suggest if um, if you want to loosen up with your watercolours. And there are plenty of brushes that I have that I don't really use, like the Silverline, Silverline um, the Jackson Silverline brush, dagger brush. So if you're like me, then you probably don't need any new brushes. It's just a case of getting into your materials and using... Uh, the equipment, the materials that you do have. Um, I know it's it's really nice to buy new things when it comes to art, and you can spend you can spend a lot of money really with uh, different materials. But I think for me, it's just using the ones that I've already got. Some paintings just won't seem complete without adding a few birds, so I've just popped mine in the light area of the painting, so 
a standout. But that's it for this week. I hope you like this one. Thanks for joining me. Please give me a thumbs up and see you next week.